Aaron J. Jack. He's a storm chaser and severe weather videographer. Uh, good morning to you, Aaron. I'm going to assume that you have not slept a wink since we last spoke. You're still in Punta Gorda. Tell us what it was like riding out the storm last night. Yeah, well, you know, I did I did manage to get some sleep last night because we couldn't go anywhere. We were surrounded by the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, storm surge came here into Punta Gorda, about 10 feet plus of storm surge. And you can see the aftermath of that storm surge here with these boats that have been pushed on the land here into these into a, into a, a residential area. There's homes back behind me here. Uh, and this whole area last night all had about uh, five to six feet, maybe higher storm surge. But that storm surge was higher than that uh, because we are about five to six feet above sea level here. Uh, but it was uh, it was like standing in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico last night, uh, flooding flooding waters all over the place. Uh, bad uh, bad. You know, we had strong wind here as well. We had power flashes. Uh, power was went out at our hotel. It's still out in this area. Uh, but you know, it was a uh, significant. It was a major hurricane, and we definitely uh, got some of those major impacts here at Punta Gorda last night. Aaron, the storm surge, as you point out, wasn't as high, wasn't as historic as forecasters were predicting. Thank goodness. Would you describe Hurricane Milton as being more of a wind event or a water event, in your view? Uh, here in our location, it was definitely uh, more of a water event. I know there were the wind aspects further to the north. Uh, but overall, you know, uh, it was, you know, normally when I target these hurricanes, I target the wind. Uh, but this one, I knew it was going to be more of a, a surge and uh, flooding event. So that's why we stuck down here uh, to the Punta Gorda area. Uh, we knew that the storm surge was going to come up here significantly. Uh, it surrounded us at our hotel last night. We were basically on an island with nowhere to go. So it was, uh, you know, people are, uh, thankfully, the water has receded for the most part in most areas this morning. So people are out driving around. But left in its wake are boats and, and lots and lots of mud. There's mud everywhere. They're actually trying to clear all that mud out right now. The, the local crews, that are, city crews, are got their bulldozers out and bulldozing that mud into uh, the drainage system. So that's going to take some time to clean up, that's for sure. You know, and this area was hit uh, just two weeks ago by Hurricane Helene. And then two years ago by Hurricane Ian. Uh, with Hurricane Ian, though, they took more of the eye of the storm. Uh, so it was a, a wind impacts here in Hurricane Ian two years ago. Uh, and then with Helene, Helene was well north of here up in Perry, Florida, the Big Bend region of Florida. So they had a surge event here, but nothing like what we experienced last night. So uh, I'm interested in more about what you're seeing on the ground there. You said that crews are already out there this morning starting the cleanup. Oh, that's right. People, even though even the residents, I see residents cleaning up. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're already got the bulldozers out there trying to clear the roads of debris and the mud. You know, that's one of the most important things uh, when you're when you're recovering from a hurricane is getting those roadways cleared uh, so that you can get first responders in. You can get food and water and get uh, utility crews in to start bringing those pow the power back online, get that grid back going. So uh, definitely the number one first priority is, uh, well, I would say the first priority is making sure anyone needs if there's anyone that needs help that's rescued getting that done and then starting to clear the roadways to get the rest of the help into the area Aaron uh, just a final question then before you go you've seen a lot of storms uh, for for your own personal history books how would you describe Milton uh, you know Milton was your I would say your typical uh, major hurricane at landfall in fact it was actually a weakening major hurricane so you know I've uh, I've intercepted hurricanes that were not quite of, as high of a category, but were strengthening and had more significant wind impacts. But this one is historic, and just in the, just for the fact that it, it was a Category Five storm uh, for multiple days out in the Gulf of Mexico as it made its way here. Uh, really, it went through a rapid intensification phase, uh, going from a tropical storm to a to a Category Five hurricane, uh, basically in, in less than 24 hours. So uh, very uh, historic in that regard. Uh, you know, if you're a weather junkie like me, and you looked at the satellite views of this hurricane from from above, it was a it was a beautiful looking storm when it was out in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, and then as it came ashore, it did weaken as forecast and then made landfall just to our north uh, near Sarasota, Florida. So uh, definitely a historic storm, uh, one that people here are definitely never going to forget. Aaron J. Jack, he's a storm chaser. We're glad you're okay. We're grateful for your time with us this morning. And of course, we continue uh, to follow what is happening in Florida. Aaron, all the best to you. Now, some